In just over two weeks, Congress will hear and be back to Capitol Hill, where a slew of issues await lawmakers. First up, an ongoing fight over a massive defense bill. The Senate passed its own version before leaving town in late July, taking out provisions on a number of things like abortion that were included by House Republicans. Also at play is a push to help an onslaught of people trying to navigate a backed up immigration system. At the same time, migrants continue to pour into the country and here in Chicago as well. And joining me now is Congressman Raja, Raja Krishnamurthy. Congressman, good to see you again. Hey, same here, Paul. Thank you. So you're home on break, uh, but when you get back, it is time to deal with the battle of the defense budget. Uh, as you know, something got out of the House. The Senate passed something that didn't match. You've got the Freedom Caucus who says, no, we need provisions about abortion and drag shows and trans issues. Senator Durbin on my show said he's not sure what's going to happen. Do you have a sense of what will happen? I'm not really sure. I think there's going to be basically internal warfare uh, in the House Republican caucus because I think there's just um, some people who are so hell bent on, you know, inserting extraneous provisions re regarding you know drag shows and regarding um, uh, issues having nothing to do with kind of the topics at hand that um, I think that they're going to drive their fellow colleagues insane. Um, and I think that is a question of whether McCarthy is going to be able to hold his caucus together and get them, you know, uh, on the right page about, you know, getting the people's business done and making sure there's no government shutdown. Along the similar lines, you are going to be facing potentially another government shutdown, uh, basically October 1st, beginning of the new fiscal year. McCarthy has actually talked about having a, a CR, a continuing resolution for a few months to keep things going. Um, I'm not sure the Freedom Caucus will go along with that. Uh, should we expect a, a showdown? And by the way, some think that President Biden would like to show, uh, show a, uh, a shutdown of the government because it will show that Republicans are letting things go amok. I don't think anybody wants to shut down, Paul. I, honestly, I think that the problem is that, you know, when you have a shutdown, you know, people are really adversely affected. And, and some of the most vulnerable people in our society are adversely affected, not to mention seniors, not to mention people who are in the military, not to mention the, the flying public who will be affected when our airports start to be um, uh, affected by such a shutdown. So that's why it's so important that we avoid a government shutdown at all, uh, how, whatever it takes to avoid a government shutdown, um, except that I think that there are some people in the other side who actually want a shutdown and say things like, you know, a shutdown wouldn't be that bad. Let's get into some of the things you are working on specifically. Immigration, a big topic for you. You're part of a, part of a bipartisan group uh, asking the Biden administration to help clear the backlog of green card applicants with that key date coming up October 1st. It's your hope to max out employment based green cards uh, specifically. What needs to change? Well, I think that there are more than a million people in queue right now who legally applied for green cards, who legally, um, you know, obtained their H-1B uh, visas. Uh, but right now, if you come from a country such as India, for instance, um, it will take you approximately 80 to 100 years uh, to get a green card uh, if you were to go through the queue. And of course, uh, that's completely unacceptable, especially at a time when uh, we have such a shortage of uh, skilled talent, especially those positions that these types of people could fill. When we, you don't um, provide these green cards in a timely manner, then these folks aren't able to start businesses, hire Americans, uh, or innovate or create jobs here in America. And oftentimes they go to other countries, including Canada, the UK, Australia, uh, or back home to India, uh, because they just can't endure the wait any longer. Related to the pressures we feel here in Chicago and other uh, significant states around the country, some of your colleagues pushing the White House to expand work permits for migrants who are arriving in places like here. Backlogs even keep that uh, at about a 15-month wait with new migrants showing up every day. Why isn't there quicker action to resolve this? I think it's politics. Uh, surprise, surprise. Um, you know, some people uh, feel that these uh, asylees should not be able to work um, because somehow that would encourage them to seek asylum here. But I think the fact of the matter is that in a lot of these places in America, including in red states and blue states, the shortage of uh, skilled talent and workers is so acute um, that at the same time that we're complaining or that I hear complaints on the other side about 
taking care, spending money to take care of these people, why not allow them to fill some positions and uh, employ themselves uh, and take care of themselves? Um, and I think that this is something that makes a lot of sense. And I, I do hear increasingly voices, even on the other side, saying that makes sense. You are the ranking member on the House Select Committee on China, and President Biden has uh, called China a ticking time bomb after consumer prices fell there for the first time in two years. Uh, our relations with China are at a low. How do we protect ourselves from unfair trade practices, especially given that China leads in 37 of the 44 critical technologies? You follow this closely. Well, I think that we have to continue to uh, do everything we can to curb unfair trade practices. A long time ago, we decided to admit the, uh, you know, basically the the People's Republic of China to the World Trade Organization and to allow them to have most favored nation trade status in America. And what we found is that unfortunately, instead of reforming the way that they do business, uh, avoiding the economic aggression and the cyber espionage and the intellectual property theft and all the other things which we're concerned about, they've doubled down on those practices and they've continued with their unfair trade practices. So I think that, um, Starting with the Trump administration, and now the Biden administration, they put in place enforcement actions and tariffs to try to deal with those unfair trade practices. I think there will probably be there will continue to be support for those, even at the same time that we perhaps look at some of our partners and friends and allies and see how can we do more business with them. How can we, if they are willing to adopt uh, environmental and labor standards and other types of principles. Uh, that, for, for instance, undergird the USMCA and similar treaties, um, how do we do more business with them? Uh, I think those are the types of issues that will come up more and more. Well, I have you. I need to give you a chance to just briefly tell me a heartwarming story. Let's bring our conversation home. I'm talking about America keeping its word, the story of uh, U.S. Army veteran Chris McClanathan and his interpreter in Afghanistan, who we promised to, to save and we weren't doing a great job. You stepped in. Well, thank you. Um, there's an individual named Mr. Romal, uh, who is a, a Afghan interpreter for Mr. McClanathan, who's a veteran, uh, along with numerous other veterans in Afghanistan. And at the time of our exit from Afghanistan, uh, Mr. Romal was then placed in grave jeopardy and the Taliban was hunting for him because of his assistance to our troops. And so Mr. McClanathan actually informed me on a WGN program that we both happened to be on that he needed help to secure this special um, visa. It's called an SIV visa for Mr. Uh, Romal, but was having a hard time doing so. Long story short, after two years and many, many, many conversations that I had with the State Department and others uh, and my staff did, uh, sometimes very heated ones, we finally were able to secure that visa. And Mr. Romal is now safely in the United States, along with his wife and his baby girl. And uh, we're so thrilled about that. That's the way I want to end an interview on that kind of heartwarming story. I know during this break, you'll be talking about a lot of new projects that you've been bringing to the district, like a $600,000 uh, new wastewater treatment facility to Hanover Park. Um, come back and let's talk about some of those specific projects. But uh, for today, let me wish you a nice Sunday and, uh, and have a, a good break at home before you get back to work full time in D.C. Thank you so much, Paul, and you too. It's about winning. That's what we have to be focused on. Politics is about the future, not about the past. Still to come on WGN TV Political Report, Illinois' next political battle has begun. More on the competing partisan politics at the annual state fair when we come back.